Now in this time-lapse video demonstration, I'll be showing you how to use Blender to model the B29's cockpit area. Now the B29 cockpit presents some challenges. It looks like a greenhouse with a lot of glass lattice work around uh, the area. So it presents a challenge to modelers who are modeling the, uh, the hard corners for the windows. So I've actually modeled this section for at least three times to explore the different methods before I came up with uh, the workflow for this example. So here I'm showing you the, uh, the detail and uh, the result of about 1 hour 15 minutes of modeling. So let's get started with the uh, time lapse. So this is what it looks like uh, as a test render. So the time lapse is about 15 minutes. So the, this is a, I think this is the second or third attempt which I have modeled it and uh, I'm going to hide this version and then I'm going to start from a brand new model. So the first thing I do is to create a 20 sided uh, or rather 20 sided yes a 20 sided uh, cylinder but at the end I did not use this cylinder to model the cockpit. So what I've done here is I created a Bezier curve uh, which is going to be converted into a mesh and later spun to create a cone, exact cone shape or the nose section area. Now I, intend, I intended to use this as a snapping guide, sort of a retopology re guide for my finished mesh. So once I converted it, it becomes a high resolution mesh curve, which I have spun it. Okay, once I created it, I've hidden it, I've applied a smooth and I've hidden it uh, to be used later. But uh, for this time lapse uh, demonstration, I didn't use it in the end. So what I did here was I selected one vertex from the cylinder, duplicated it, and then just extruded it, trying to follow as close to the blueprint example as possible. So once I've done that, I spun it 20 times, all right, for 180 degrees. So most of the time I worked uh, on half the model and I used a mirror modifier to uh, to just model half of the, uh, the, the the nose section because most of the aircraft is symmet symmetrical. So what I'm doing now is that I've selected some of the uh, uh, the edge loops, right? And then I've rotated them to follow the the framework of the cockpit window. So what I'm doing here is I'm selecting the faces uh, that falls on the window and I applied an inset with a thickness of 0 0 0.025. So the the thickness of the inset varies depending on the size of your setup, okay, or the size of your blueprints. So uh, just be prepared to experiment a lot until you get the right values. So what I'm doing here now is I'm just creating windows first. Okay, I didn't fo follow exactly to the blueprint because at this stage, I just want to get the uh, the main windows out first. So now I've selected the areas which constitute the windows and I'm going to apply a custom material to them. This will make selection later on very much easier because you can select by materials. So I've created a reflective material for the body and I cre created a uh, transparent blue material for the windows. So in the major material editor, while in edit mode, I created two materials and I selected the blue material and then I just applied it to the uh, the windows. Okay, the next thing I do was uh, I separated the windows. I just used select by material and then I pressed the Y key to separate them. But uh, it didn't separate as a, another object. It still remains as an object uh, within the object. So it's just separated from the mesh itself. But uh, then later on, I turn on the uh, auto merge editing, and I find that the vertices of the windows kept getting stuck to my uh, the framework mesh. So in the end, I use the select select by material method to select all the windows, and I press P to separate all the windows into a separate object so that it doesn't interfere with my uh, uh, auto merge editing. So what you see here is I've already applied a subdivision modifier to the entire model, and I'm just adding edge loops okay and then I'm using the uh, shift V 
uh, Shift D to align the, or rather, uh, I'm using uh, Snap with Vertex Snap on, and I just just grab the vertex and just hover it over the uh, the vertex that I want to snap to. I'm also inserting edge loops so that I can have a harder corner for the uh, framework of the windows. So this took me a while to figure out, but uh, this is generally the workflow that I'm working on right now. So this this is the time-consuming bit which is uh, inserting the edge loops and then positioning them until you get a more defined edge. Now you can use the uh, the crease the crease method. You can use the uh, creasing method to select the edges and then make, make them crease harder, but I, I prefer to just insert edge loops. And for this corner, because I do not want to insert an edge loop right across the entire body, I just uh, use the knife tool and cut a, cut from one of the vertex and then just spread it out so I get a tighter corner. But uh, one of the phenomena I got was that crease, that wrinkle you get uh, over there. So I rounded that a bit. So more tightening around here by inserting edge loops and then moving vertices. And you, you can see that my auto merge editing is on. So when I snap the vertices over the uh, vertex that I want to, it just automatically merges it. So that is a very, very useful tool. And also I use the uh, Shift V or the moving the vertex along the edge quite a lot. Okay, that was a test render that I did. So right now, uh, I'm looking at the nose area and I'm trying to model the uh, the cage section to match the actual uh, line drawings itself. So what I did now was I select the uh, the windows and I merge them back again, but at the same time, I turned off the auto merge editing so that uh, the the windows does not stick back to the frame itself. So right now I'm just pondering, I'm just looking and trying to decide how to, what was the best approach to model the uh, the nose area here because the framework is very unique. And uh, so after some thinking and some uh, m moving around the geometry, uh, I've decided to uh, just delete some faces away and then move some faces around and to scale it as well. In this case, I made a mistake. Uh, I scaled it based on the cursor location. So the cursor was right behind, so I repositioned the cursor and undid it and rescaled that again. Now, this area here presents the biggest challenge for me because I have to ensure that I have the right geometry flow so that uh, it follows the same cage structure of this, uh, almost like a greenhouse structure of the B29 nose area. Now the drawings that I've used is from uh, a Russian blueprint, which I've downloaded from the internet. And I spent uh, about an hour adjusting the blueprints and aligning them in Blender before I actually start to model it. So sometimes when you get the blueprints, you, you can't expect them to be 100% accurate. Uh, I've also looked at tons of photographs to get good references. And in order to uh, to get everything to look look accurate, okay. And um, I also want to thank um, Michael Mickelson, all right, for pro providing some of the high resolution drawings uh, that helped me to get better reference. So uh, right now I'm just still looking around and planning what is the best approach to get the shape or the windows to look right. So, actually, the best experience to learn learn this is to actually get your hands dirty and start modeling something. And you make a lot of mistakes along the way, and uh, it's, it's just a lot of trial and error. Then eventually, you get the uh, the, the best way, or you discover the best way to to model the, uh, especially for complex structure like this. So in the end, I decided to re to delete a bunch of faces and then just remodel that bottom framework from scratch. So every time I extrude the sections, I have to make sure that the the side that which I want to join has the same number of geometry. And at this stage, I believe I turn on auto merge editing again, so uh, I can just join it straight to the windows. And the window structure is actually reattached back to the same object again, so that I can 
uh, can do the auto merge at that auto merge editing together so at this stage uh, I've duplicated a section of the the circular cockpit window and I've extruded the edge using the uh, the cursor position as the scale reference so that I can get a more consistent rounded shape from there I'm inserting a bunch of edge loops so that I have enough details to snap to the uh, duplicated geometry so you can see at this stage I've never once used the the right view the side view for for modeling right now I'm just concentrated on the concentrating on the front view just trying to get everything match the draw to match the drawing and right now I'm happy with the result but I just need to create another framework okay I just recolor it so it makes it easy for me to see okay insert a couple of edge loops so that I have enough geometry to snap and weld to and now basically I have that half crescent uh, window piece area which I'll have to reconstruct so this one is is a bit tricky because I don't have the same number of uh, geometry from one side to another so you're gonna have to live with some triangular faces here so there's there's no strict rule to say that you you must do everything in quads ideally if you model everything in quads they're gonna subdivide much better but sometimes because of cases like this and I'm trying to get the video done within a time span so um, yeah you, you can just model with some triangles uh, along the way okay so right now this is the first time I'm seeing the side view what I did was I select the section which I know was flat then I scale scaled it in the y-axis then later instead of rotating I used a tool called shear which is control alt shift s so that you will shear the shape until it's a nice angle matching the uh, the same way as the real B29 so what I'm doing here is I'm cu cutting across the crescent shape uh, window area uh, to give it another level of detail so that I can punch it out to give it a more rounded shape at this stage I have not subdivided the entire mesh yet so what you see here all the curves are all represented by the high level of geometry now in terms of uh, at this stage uh, this is actually considered quite a high amount of geometry uh, at, at the base level so the the reason is very simple I want to try to keep the shape as close to the model as possible so uh, you, you can't really escape from the amount of geometry that uh, that you're working with especially for models like these so in the end you will be spending a lot of time tweaking your model like uh, what I'm doing here so but uh, at its un unsubdivided stage it looks pretty okay but when I subdivide it you can see that the windows now need some work because the uh, the windows are still separated I have not welded these this these windows at least to the uh, to the rest of the uh, wire mesh so what I did was uh, right now I'm just inserting edge loops to harden the corners and because I can use the material uh, select to select all the windows I can separate them anytime by pressing Y by pressing Y you separate the um, the selected geometry but not as a separate object it still stays within the object so once you separated it you can actually extrude it or add a solidify or separate it into a separate object add a solidify so that you can have a thickness to the the windows so uh, that will be done at a later stage right now I'm just focused on trying to tweak the the no section area to get it right now granted at the end of this demonstration uh, the there are some areas which are still not uh, as good as I want it to be but uh, generally this is the workflow you will approach to try to model uh, a subject like this and of course um, you can criticize my job uh, my topology because uh, there are some triangular uh, faces that I've used but uh, this is this is done out so that I can get this tutorial done within the the time limit that I set for myself okay over here I'm stuck with uh, 
a geometry which I couldn't get to, to be flat exactly. So in the end, I resorted to using the knife tool to reconstruct the area and uh, until the, the, the sides matches. Okay. So if you have two triangular faces that are touching each other, you can actually select both the faces and then press F to convert them back into a quad. So I'm nearing the end of the the uh, the time lapse demonstration. So what I'm doing here is I'm just doing a test render to see what it looks like, adjusting the uh, transparency of the the window material. And obviously, I spotted a hard edge around the area, and uh, then there's just more tweaking to do. So just use all the tools at your disposal in Blender, and you can uh, literally model anything you want. So basically that's it for the demonstration and uh, I hope you can learn some tricks from this. I know the time is a little bit fast but uh, if you have any questions you can leave a comment and uh, I'll try my best to explain how I achieve this effect. Uh, so thanks again for watching and uh, happy blending!